We're going to give it one more minute. I am going to start recording um, while you look at your chart that's in front of you. And then we'll start in exactly one minute um, as we continue to have more people join us. This is really exciting. I literally have. So, you know, the same old thing. That kind of stuff. Yeah, it would come this way, and I would say, School solicitor. Who was asking? The school or the parents? They were to give it up. They keep popping up, Dana. I love it. They are. We're slowing down a little bit. Okay, we are going to get started though. Um, we have a ton of new faces on. Um, the survey is single choice. I am being pushy today and um, I'm asking you just to choose one. I know some of you serve several roles. If you wanna pick the one that you identify with most coming to this meeting, I should have uh, stated that up front. So thank you for letting me know that. Um, but I did wanna make, I, I usually give multiple choices, but today I was just not, I was feeling a single choice option, so. Um, I made everyone pick today. So hello, thank you so much for joining us. Um, welcome, welcome. I am beyond excited to have this many people join us for this presentation today. Um, my name is Dana Milakovic. For those that I don't know, um, I am the social emotional wellness lead for the state system of support. And I'm also the mental wellness and trauma lead for the Department of Education. I work out of the office for safe schools. You are only going to hear me for a few seconds today um, because I am so excited uh, that we have Jeff from PCCD with us today to talk to you and that's who you really wanna hear. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen for a second and then um, just turn it over to him. We're gonna keep the poll going. So if you haven't answered, go ahead and answer that. Um, just for my state system of support SEW leads, just so that we all know where we are, we are here in the learning session. I cannot believe how much we have already accomplished this year and everything that we have done. Um, so if we have one more action period call coming up and then we have another learning session and then we are into our celebration of everything that you have done this year and the amazingness that you are, and then our planning for uh, next year so we can make sure we're up and running. Um, so with that, I am going to cut everything else short from me and stop sharing and give it over to Jeff to introduce himself. All right. Um, uh, good afternoon, I guess. Um, it's one o'clock, so it is afternoon. Uh, my name is Jeff Colchin. I am a uh, deputy director uh, in charge of the unit of prevention. Uh, in the Office of Justice Programs at uh, the Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquency, PCD. Uh, basically today I'm speaking to you in my role as the uh, project lead for the Pennsylvania Youth Survey, or PAYS. Um, we believe that PAYS is, is absolutely instrumental um, at the state level, as well as the county level, the local level, and we're hopeful at the IU level uh, to really getting the voice of our kids uh, to inform the work that you do, uh, to inform the work that, that we fund, uh, to really decide exactly what the needs are and really um, uh, identify the, the best way to, to help our kids succeed. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the, the background of the PAYS, and then we'll talk about the uh, PAYS preliminary report, which came out. Uh, hopefully you all are aware of this uh, report that, that was released to every, uh, every school district that took part in the uh, survey um, via online administration this past fall. That data is out there. Uh, and to steal a little bit of Dana's thunder, I think, uh, we are going to uh, be sharing IU level reports for all of your districts that took part online. Um, so you'll be able to have some um, some some IU level data that, that can really help you work with your districts, especially those that took part in the survey online um, to, to determine exactly the best way to 
uh, measure the impact of, of, of what's gone on the last two years. Um, as we all know, it's been it's been quite the ride, quite the uh, the experience for for not just not just our our uh, our administrators, our our educators, but our kids and their families as well. So, with that, I'm going to hop. Uh, I'm going to switch over to the report. Bear with me, real quick. And while you're doing that, Jeff, eighty percent of our participants that responded um, are familiar with the PAYS report. And 49 have seen the preliminary page report, um, and 23 are familiar with the fact that it's out there, but have not seen one yet. Uh, and the um, thank you very much for that information. That's great to hear. Um, if you're not uh, if you've not accessed it yet, uh, reach out to your districts. Uh, the information was sent directly to the superintendents or the um, the school administrators. If it was a charter school or a, a private school. Um, so, uh, I would suggest reaching out to them to, um, receive that information. Um, so why is this not moving? <laughs> there we go. All right. So, uh, today we're going to go over a brief history of pays, our participation rates. We'll talk about the preliminary highlights report, uh, the purpose and goals of it, what's in the report. Uh, and then it's kind of some some notes and guidance to, to be to be aware of. And I'll flip it back over to Dana uh, for data use and application. How can you make the best out, out of this information? Uh, typically, the page reports, uh, the, the summary profile reports do not come out to our districts until the end of April. What we decided is that this is, is absolutely a essential time to take action. Uh, so we prepared these reports. Um, and release the information, uh, preliminary information now um, so that our districts can, can really see what's going on with their kids and take action to, uh, to assist them. Uh, 2021 uh, is the 30, uh, 32 years we've been doing this since 1989. PAYS is done every other year in the fall of each odd year. Um, PAYS is uh, adopted from what's known as the Community Care uh, Youth Survey. Uh, CTC provides information about uh, risk and protective factors. Uh, why are kids engaged in problem behaviors? And what sorts of information or what sorts of activities in their communities, their families, their schools can help buffer them from that risk? We also uh, contain information about the Generation at Risk Survey. Uh, the Generation at Risk is our um, our information about um, use and, and uh, attitudes towards uh, various problem behaviors. Um, generation risk provides 30 day and lifetime uh, information about substance use uh, uh, in particular. PAYS really looks at uh, behaviors, attitudes, and knowledge. What are, are you think? know and believe about antisocial behaviors. And why this is important is because it allows us to really um, identify where there may be attitudes that are detrimental to their, their behavior, as well as things that, that may be uh, misinterpreted, uh, things that uh, they may think that all kids are doing, but really all kids are not doing. And that allows us to take action to really uh, affect that behavior in a positive way. Um, PAYS collects information across multiple domains. We get a holistic picture of what's going on in our kids' lives. We have questions around what's going on in their community, what's going on in their school, what's going on in their family, and what's going on with themselves as well as with their peer group. Uh, we know that, that each of these different domains uh, have different ways to take uh, uh, to, to impact, to take uh, positive actions to affect. Uh, so by doing this, uh, by, by using this data, we can determine the best way to, to positively impact our kids. Um, as Dana mentioned, we have a huge online uh, participation rate this year, and we're so grateful for that. We think that, that part of that is because of the fact that, that with online learning, uh, many more kids have uh, access to, uh, to online uh, capability, uh, have access to laptops or tablets or whatever else. But as you can see here, we went from 26% in 2015 to 84% participating online uh, this past year. Uh, what that allowed us to do was add what's known as skip logic. 
Um, skip logic means that if you answer no to a certain question, you wouldn't get questions that that kind of uh, uh, develop from that that initial question. So if you say you've never used alcohol in your lifetime, you wouldn't be asked questions of around uh, 30 day use or binge drinking or things like that. Uh, what that does is that allows us to reduce the amount of time it takes to to administer the survey, uh, which is a, a, a benefit to schools. Um, we, we've seen a huge increase in participation uh, because of the fact that it only takes a class period. Um, it's, it takes 35 to 40 minutes to administer this every other year. So it's not like this is a huge burden on our schools or our kids or our teachers. And the, the information that's provided as part of this survey is absolutely uh, essential. It's absolutely um, one of the most important things that we can use as we're trying to, to decide uh, how to positively impact what's going on in our kids' lives. So as you can see, we've, uh, from 89 to 97, we had uh, between 38,000, 81,000 students. Uh, beginning in 21, uh, 2001, we added the, the CTC use survey uh, that I mentioned, uh, that risk and protective factors. And we've gone up to 254,000 students participating uh, across the Commonwealth and 417 of our, our 500 school districts uh, as of 2019. We're still calculating our, our 2021 information, uh, but we're guessing it's gonna be about in that same range. What a wonderful participation rate and what a wonderful voice from our kids as we start to make these sorts of decisions. So as you can see here, um, through, 19, through 2019, 417 districts, uh, over 1,100 of our schools um, our school buildings that participate, 60% of all the buildings in our Commonwealth, 58 non-traditional schools, public, uh, I'm sorry, private, uh, charter, parochial, uh, and cyber took part as well. Uh, for every district that had a minimum of two school districts participate, we had a county level report uh, prepared that is available on the PCD PAYS website at www.payas.pa.gov. So we had 57 of our 67 counties participate. Only one county that, that uh, was eligible uh, had no uh, participating pays data. Uh, so we have a wealth of information that's used by our county categoricals as well. Our children and youth, our juvenile probation, our drug and alcohol, our SCAs. Um, so all this information is available uh, for the planning decisions at the, the state level, the county level, the IU level, and our local level. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So why do we do the preliminary report? Well, what we decided to do is that we wanted to get our, give our districts more data access. We wanted to get them data earlier and get them data that they can act on right now, uh, early in the, the um, uh, I guess, spring uh, semester of the uh, of the academic year, rather than waiting until the fall uh, when typically the pays data would be uh, acted upon. Um, that report uh, will come out, the, the full profile report will come out uh, before April 30th um, to all the districts that participated, both online and paper and pencil. But this preliminary data is available now and really can can help you um, work with your districts to, to take action. Um, we really wanted to, to, to see what happened over the last year or so with our kids and the, the pandemic. Uh, so we have questions uh, that, were, that were part of that online uh, survey report, excuse me, that um, uh, really uh, measure the impact of COVID-19 as well as the impact of remote learning. What was their experience with remote learning? How did that? How did that happen? If they had to, to go remote, what was the experience they had with that, and what could our districts learn from that? So our our um, preliminary report contains information around substance abuse, mental health concerns, as well as suicidal ideation, uh, school climate and safety, as well as bullying, uh, abuse, and food scarcity, the impact of COVID nineteen, and remote learning. So some of the nuances that we wanted to make sure that we, we uh, made you aware of uh, is online only. 
Um, so if a district took part in paper and pencil, they will get their, their information, just not until that April report. Uh, the county reports are published on that PAYS website, www.pays.pa.gov, then click on 2021. Um, for uh, the counties that had a minimum of two districts participate online, those reports are, on, are, are posted online. The IU reports, likewise, you had to have a minimum of two participating school districts. I believe all of our IUs did. Um, so you will be receiving a link to that report after this webinar. Uh, so you can take a look at, at the, the, uh, the results from all of your participating uh, districts in your catchment area uh, and be able to work with them. Uh, so they're able to compare their results to their peers that, that you serve. Um, this is the only report that will have that COVID-19 and remote learning information. Those will not be available in those summary reports that, that are, are published uh, later in, uh, in uh, April. Um, we, uh, I mentioned before about the, the skip logic. Um, so for example, if the um, students reported the, that their district did not uh, engage in remote learning, there will be no information on that. Likewise, if they, um, if they were asked a question, if they were hurt or abused, um, and they answered no to that question, uh, they will, the, the results will only indicate those students that, that reported being abused rather than all the students. Um, the data uh, that is in these summary reports, these preliminary reports is reported at the grade level. Um, the profile reports, the ones that will come out in April, include both grade level and all grade combined. Uh, again, this, this helps us really see where the, the different impact of various uh, problem behaviors is occurring. Um, so we all know that, that what's going on with a sixth grader may be different than what's going on with the senior. This allows us to provide kind of the comparison and, and really uh, impact um, Take, take action to impact uh, the kids where they are, what they're reporting to us. Um, we uh, have a note in there about the, uh, if there's a bar missing in a chart, that's because uh, we had zero students reporting that, that item. Uh, we do take care to make sure that all of our data uh, is anonymous and confidential. Our students are, are made aware of that when they take the survey uh, so that they, they have confidence in the fact that if they are honest in the survey uh, when they take it, that it's not gonna come back to haunt them. They're not gonna say, well, yes, I smoked marijuana in the last 30 days and then get called down to the principal's office or have their parents called in and said, you know, Jeff Colchin reported he smoked marijuana in the last 30 days. What are we gonna do about that? This is the best practice with survey design. When students or any survey participant knows that their results are gonna be anonymous and confidential, they're much more likely to be honest and forthcoming with their responses. So we want you to take, uh, take the time to read the description for each item. We'll talk about that a little bit later on um, to understand exactly what's being reported. Uh, and then when those full reports come out, we will prepare the IU level reports uh, again with those, those full profile reports. You'll be able to compare what's gone on over, over the last three administrations, 17, 19, 21. This allows us to really get a good grip as to what's changed. Um, again, the summary reports, the preliminary reports we put out right now um, are because of, of what's gone on with the pandemic. But there's going to be some things that, that are, are going to be comparable uh, over the last three years. What's changed? What's gone on? what's gone up, what's gone down, all those sorts of things that our kids are telling us that allow us to take better steps to, to use the funds that we have to take action to help them. All right, so I guess I will um, switch if I can figure out how to do this real quick. Um, let me hop out of this, I guess. I was gonna say you can stop sharing, reshare, or just. Yeah, I was gonna it. do that. Yep. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and pull up the uh, this summary reports. And while Jeff is pulling that up, the Pays website is in chat. If you um, need it, 
as a reference, you didn't have time to jot it down as Jeff was giving it. www.pays.pa.gov and select 2021. Can you tell I've said that quite a few times over the last uh, uh, 15 years or so of my career. Um, as I said, I am the, the PAYS project lead. I am extremely vested in this and I am extremely happy to work with, with all of you um, to really uh, see what our kids are telling us. So this is the, the report that was prepared uh, for each district. This is the same uh, template you'll get as an IU. Uh, this is a any town report. Uh, so the data is, is um, not accurate, I guess is the right way. It's, it's basically dummy data uh, that we just wanted to use. We use this to proof the, the template to make sure it was good. All of your uh, IU reports will contain the data from all of your participating districts all the districts will have their specific data for the kids that took part. Um, so you can basically see um, the highlights here. It's participation, substance use, mental health, school climate, abuse and food scarcity, COVID-19, and remote learning. You'll see the uh, participation rates, um, the enrollment that was uh, in each of the, uh, the grades, uh, according to PDE. Uh, that is as of the 2021, um, I'm sorry, the 2020 um, enrollment rates. We did not have that available for 2021, so we did use the prior year for that. And then you'll see the number of responses. Um, the the uh, number of, of students in each of the grades uh, that took part uh, in the, the survey online um, and whose results are being reported in here. Um, so. While PAYS asks questions around both lifetime and 30-day past month use, uh, we're only displaying the 30-day use in here. Um, and that basically came about because of the, the, uh, the skip logic I mentioned before. We really didn't want to have um, uh, misleading information saying 30-day uh, use uh, compared to, uh, to kids that reported no use at all. Uh, so you'll see lifetime. Um, alcohol use, um, the results are listed as um, the, uh, the list here of one or more times and never used before uh, in their lifetime. You can see the reports uh, breaks it out by 6th, 8th, 10th, and 12th grade. Lifetime marijuana use, same thing. Prescription pain reliever. Uh, one of the, the interesting things is that the, despite um, the, the issues and problems we've been seeing with, um, with uh, opioid use, we're not seeing that with our kids. Uh, and that's a great thing for us to build upon. Um, the other side of that coin is the fact that, that there are other things that we do need to deal with. Uh, we talk about uh, marijuana use. We talk about alcohol use. We're seeing a lot of kids engaging in this behavior, especially in the 12th grades. Um, and we know that Though it may not be a, a quote unquote gateway drug uh, leading from alcohol or marijuana to opioids, uh, exposure does increase the likelihood uh, that, that students may engage in that behavior. So the more we can deal with some of these other preliminary substance abuse, uh, the less likely they are to engage in, in something that may, in all honesty, kill them um, with, with some of these uh, prescription pain reliever. Uh, so we had uh, cigarette use. Uh, we have vaping. Uh, vaping was added, I believe, in 2017. And it's a little bit scary. Uh, we're seeing a lot more kids uh, engaging in vaping behaviors, especially as you get to the older grades, um, than uh, engage in cigarettes. We've seen a, a lot of cigarette use to diminish, but we've seen a lot of increase in vaping. Um, E-cigarettes and, and other sorts of, of delivery systems um, and I think that's, that's something that we need to work on. It, it's, it's an idea that, well, I may not be smoking a cigarette, but I'm vaping, so that's not as bad for me. It's not good for you either, and that's something that we need to, to work on. Mental health is one of the areas that we're most concerned about, uh, both at the state level. Uh, I've done a lot of work with, with Dana and her colleagues over at the uh, Office of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services at, at DHS. Um, but we're, we're concerned about our kids and it, having these sorts of um, 
really negative thoughts and and how do we how do we take action to address that um my office has worked with uh, my office at pc has worked with uh pde and dhs we're uh, going to be releasing a funding announcement in the near future uh, to to try to address these these mental health issues but as you can see uh, depression last year during the last 12 months did you ever feel so sad or hopeless almost every day for two weeks or more in a row that you stopped doing your usual activities over 36 percent of our seniors reported that and that's that's scary to me I, it's, I i'm not sure about everyone else but that's something that we really, really need to, to be cognizant of and really take action on. Uh, suicidal ideation. Uh, over 20% of our 10th graders and 12th graders reported considering suicide. 13% of our 6th graders reported considering suicide. Made up suicide plan. 17% uh, of our 10th graders. 17% of our 12th graders. 15% of our 8th graders made a plan to to end their own lives over the last year. Over 12% of our 10th and 12th graders attempted suicide over the last year. All these sorts of things are, are um, things that are being reported by our kids. Again, going back to the idea that the information in the support is anonymous and confidential. Our students are telling us what they're really thinking. And that's for us as, as the, the leadership in the state uh, to figure out how to take action on, how do we help them? Uh, Cyberbullying. Um, I'm not sure if, if everyone has, has uh, you know, thought about this as well, but it occurs more in our younger kids than our older kids. 18% of our sixth graders reported being cyberbullied. Over the last um, over the last twelve months, via text or social media, almost thirty percent of our sixth graders report being bullied. Seventeen percent of our twelfth graders, which is still a enormous enormous amount of our kids, reported being bullied in the in the past year. School safety, one on one with teachers. Um, you know, this was obviously a, a kind of a, a uh, a difficult year for our, our teaching community as well as our kids, um, but we're seeing the need for for more one on one activities with their teachers. Class involvement, same thing. So as we do come out of this pandemic, as we do move into um, the the status quo or what was considered normal before, there are things that pays can provide to help us really take action to. Uh, to engage our kids more, to recognize where they may uh, have deficits that they need to, to have addressed. Positive feedback from teachers. I think this is a good one. We're seeing over 50% of our 10th and 12th grade students reporting getting positive feedback from their teachers. Our teachers are so instrumental in our, our students' well-being. I think this is something to, to, to recognize, celebrate, and build upon. Uh, abuse. Uh, again, remember this is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is only those students that reported being abused. But you can see over 60% of all of our grades, 6th, uh, 10th, or 6th, 8th, 10th, and 12th, reported emotional abuse, insults, or name calling. And we can say this is kids being kids, but it's not. It, it really is, is things that that we need to, to, to work on to, to help have a safe, uh, productive, pro-social environment, uh, not just in our schools, but in their communities and in their families and in their, uh, their, their interactions with their peers as well. This is something that, that as we looked at this data, uh, I think is very, very concerning. Um, food insecurity, our students reporting, worrying about running out of food. 22.7% uh, of our sixth graders up to 20.7% of our 12th graders were worried about running out of food over the last year. Um, that's a fifth of our students said that they, they're not sure if they were gonna be able to eat. Um, and while we have the, um, you know, free and reduced lunch, um, you know, uh, programs with our schools and our schools did such a great job 
uh, over the course of the pandemic with helping our families, this is still something that our kids worry about and they really shouldn't. They really shouldn't have to worry about um, if they're gonna be able to, to, to have dinner, to have breakfast, to have lunch. Food scarcity, um, how many of our kids skipped a meal? Um, almost 14% of our, our 12th graders reported that they skipped a meal over the last year because their, their families did not have a, a chance or did not have enough money to, to buy food and, and give them a chance to, uh, to have a meal. So that is, is kind of uh, a lot of information that's gonna be included in the profile reports as well. Uh, I'm gonna take us into uh, the COVID uh, report, uh, the COVID impact report as well as the, uh, the remote learning report. So these are the, the, report, the, uh, the questions that were asked for kids. I or some of my family was sick with COVID, a family member or friend died from COVID, uh, someone lost their job, I felt more anxious or nervous, I felt more relaxed or comfortable. What we tried to do is to capture not just the negative impacts, because we know that there were a huge amount of negative impact uh, from the pandemic, but what went on that may have been positive that they didn't have a chance to do. Um, my family ate more meals together. They shared more quality time playing games or exercising or watching movies. They learned a new hobby. I played more online games. I couldn't be with my friends uh, physically, so I we engaged in online. So what you can see here is kind of those reports, uh, the report out. Again, this is the Anytown report. So this is kind of uh, dummy data based on an aggregate. It's not our state data, it's not your local data. But you can see that there is a, a, a quite a bit of, of, um, of impact. Um, if you scroll over each of these bars, you can see the, the actual uh, number of students that took part uh, and the percentage that reported. So you can see as I'm hovering over right now, 12% of our sixth graders reported having a family member or, or a close friend die. 13% of our eighth graders, th over 13% of our 10th graders, and over almost 14% of our 12th graders. So there's, there's a lot of information in this, sum this uh, preliminary summary report that'll help you really uh, work with your, your participating districts to take action. Um, and then uh, the final section of this is our remote learning. I miss spending time at school. I miss uh, learning with students. I miss learning with teachers. I understood what my teacher was saying when they taught me online. I stayed focused while I was online uh, doing schoolwork. Um, my learning improved. Uh, I had a quiet space. I had a place where I could do my online work without uh, siblings or parents or you know other uh, interfering fact uh, in, 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 uh, interfering factors uh, uh, affecting how I learn. Uh, it was easy to look to use the online learning practice or the platform that uh, my schools provide. I had a, I had access to an internet connection. One of the things that we've learned, not every kid has access to the internet, and that's something that at a state level we're starting to work um, to to uh, positively uh, affect. Um, there are many positive things that came out of the, the pandemic. So if there are things that we can learn from and really take uh, positive actions to, to positively impact uh, at, at, from a state perspective, we want to do that. So you can kind of see um, the results of those remote learning questions. Again, you'll, you'll get these reports uh, for your IU. Uh, to really um, see what you what your kids uh, that you're serving are reporting, but this is the uh, the the report that we've we've uh, prepared, uh, and we're very happy to uh, uh, to share with you. Um, so I'm going to pause it there and bring back up the PowerPoint real quick. And I'm going to flip it over to Dana at this point. So I want to give us a chance to talk. So I'm going to be short and sweet on this. We are all here because we know the importance of data. 
Um, and I'm excited that we have so many of our different leads here because as we've been talking about, the PAYS report obviously looks at substance use and mental health, but we really wanna highlight that the preliminary report can help all of us, that wh whether you're doing scaffolded supports or academics or systems conditions, we know that we have the ability to now look at not only the mental health of our students, but what was the impact of COVID? What are their perceptions? What are you seeing in your individual regions? How was remote learning affected by that? And how do we build out those social emotional wellness tools that really impact the learning environment so that we can move forward in helping um, address the learning gaps that we're seeing and what we're hearing you know, statewide um, in terms of the social emotional wellness and relationships with staff and with students. So I'm gonna have Jeff go to the next slide for me. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> so this is um, work that we have done through the state system of support. And if you are not connected with uh, your state system of support SEW lead, which I know all of you are, but you can always reach out to us to um, connect if you're not sure who that is. I know we've had great collaboration within our IUs and we really appreciate that. Um, but we have done a data approach for the planning for success, moving to success, um, or moving to action teaming for success and staff and student wellness. And they are all up on the Accelerated Learning uh, website. If you need support in that area, um, please reach out to your SEW lead in your IU or to myself or uh, Dr. Scott Curran, who's also on this call. And next. So we are gonna pause for questions, comments. This is time to just unmute and let us know what questions you have, um, what you need. I'll answer a couple I did put in the chat, but the data you saw that Jeff went over was um, not real, like not data that you will see. Um, it was the kind of the anytime school, but he described it just as you would if it was your data. Um, so he kind of modeled how to do that and how you would look at that. Um, you all will be getting individual IU data. So I'm putting together lists that will go out to every lead for all the different IUs for um, state system of support. So the four different leads um, and then the state leads as well. Please know that the data will be de-identified. So when Jeff talked about participating districts, it will tell you which districts participated, but you will not know that Jeff's school district said da 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 and Mary's school district said da 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 da. You won't know, it's, it's, it's de-identified um, for your individual IU. And you will not get specific district uh, data unless your district sends it to you directly. So that's a conversation um, that you would need to have with your districts if you want that data. We were really thankful for the IU reports because we wanted a way as um, you were looking forward to how, how you're supporting your districts and your participating area, how do, you how do you network? How do you help them as a region? How do you create learning opportunities and TA opportunities that are very specific to your IU um, and are more specific than the county data because many, I mean, you can you go more than one county. So I'm picking on Susan because she's in front of me, but like Susan would have to look at her data for Lebanon and then Lancaster County and try and figure out which is which and how do we coordinate them together, whereas now she has an IU one. Um, so we're going to, you know, that was the point of this. And we're very grateful to PCCD and Bach Harrison for making this happen for you. So questions. In a Mike Heater 21. Um, so I think I completely understand. We're going to get a link that takes us out to our countywide data. My question is when I was just messing around on the site as you were talking, it looks like we can already link out to the counties, but nothing's loading from what I can gather. Um, it could just be my computer. My question is will the data that's being shared be public facing at this time or not till down the road? And our link is only going to take us to data that we can see at this point. Is that what I'm gathering? The data that you can access on PCCD's website is county data. The data for the link you will be getting will be your IU data. So it will be all the participating districts for your IU. We pulled districts specifically. That will never be publicly posted. Correct. And I only think. online, only the districts took part online data. So, right. so Michael, Sorry, yes. Michael, one of the things that I found when I was looking at it 
it did it wouldn't load to view but if i downloaded it then it would load yeah it's okay. it, it takes time to load uh from the website i'm not sure why um what you know we've we've had some conversation with our vendor about that um basically it's it's give it a give it uh a, a moment to breathe but as you said you can download it and and access it that way as well And Phyllis. Phyllis. Yeah, go ahead, Phyllis. Hey, everybody. I'm, I'm Phyllis Law. I'm part of the PACE team at the state level and work with Dana and Jeff and Kelly Burke. She's our PACE coordinator is also with us somewhere in this room. Um, <laughs> but I just wanted to say that best practice really is when you get into the report, go to the right hand side. There's a little computer looking thing. Download it. Just make it the practice. Um, because what happens uh, to kind of follow up to Jeff's comp, uh, uh, comments, what happens is when there are so many people in the site at one time, the site basically crashes. So it has to wait till you come up for you to download. So good best practice, just go ahead and download it. It's the best way yeah. to do it. The only, the only downside of that is that it, you don't get that kind of float over uh, the, the, uh, the, the bar charts. Right. Um, you can't, if you download it, a, a PDF version, you can't, have that uh, kind of participation rate uh, for each of the bars. Um, I will I say, though, I was looking at county reports last week, and I did not have that issue. So I'm going to really? bet that a lot of us are in there clicking on counties right now <laughs> and <Yeah>. overloading <laughs> the site because I was playing around in it last week, and it was fine. Oh. So I think it just depends on the time of day. If you, so if you yeah. don't doubt, like if you want the little click over effect. Um, so so we'll take it as a positive that people are looking at the reports right now. <laughs> yes. Well, and the other thing I'll say is load it up, go get a coffee and come back. <laughs> there you go. So a question, hi everyone. A question I'm having about just how public the data is. I realize that link just comes to you in the IU, um, but I'm assuming you don't mean don't share it at all with anybody except internally. Is that, that could be tricky. So could you speak to um, how the IU's should be using that just internally. Don't tell anybody that you have that aggregate data. What's your thoughts? Uh, Dana, you want to take a crack at that? My my view would be it's you know it's it's for the IUs to take action on. So whatever they whatever their best practice would be. No, I would yeah, I would completely agree. I think that's going to depend on your individual um, IU and what your practice is with your data. We definitely want you to use it. We want you to share it internally. It isn't a secret that we're giving it out. The reason we decided we had a long conversation about posting it publicly. Um, and the reason we decided not to is because it can be misconstrued. So if we have data out there for counties and we have IU data and you're starting to compare them, we this isn't, this kind of to go back to the slide about data is data, it's non-judgmental. Um, we don't want there to be a judgment. So that's why we're not putting it out there publicly. Um, but it, it is, I mean, it is de-identified. So, you're not gonna know which district is which district. And it is also why we won't, we, we did not choose to just forward every district in your IU because that is that is the district's data. So um, Bach Harrison worked really, you know, carefully and, and systematically to make sure that all of the online participant districts that are in your IU are included in this, but not identified individually. And I would also say, just as another best practice, this would be a good reason if you are going to release it to at least reach out to your districts and, and tell them all of these things. Their data is included. It's not identifiable. You do not have access to their direct data, you know, and just use that, you know, build on that relationship you have with them um, because this is new. Uh, and just so that they know how the, the data is going to be used because it is public data, as we've said, but finding that space to be trans transparency is what we're all about. And also, you know, being mindful that there may be a few shifts here and there in some of those behavioral data numbers when we get the data cleaned and all that it shouldn't be huge, but there may be a few little shifts here and there. Now, as Jeff said, the COVID and the remote learning questions, they're not gonna be anywhere else. 
So they're not going to be in a profile report. They're not going to be there. So really just kind of be having that mindful release and use it as an opportunity to connect with your schools in, a, in, in maybe a new and different way. I would, uh, I would also just like to highlight, I think it's a great question, Mary, but it's a perfect opportunity for us, um, I know, in the Office for Safe Schools to really reinforce the framework we're trying to build with our IUs. Um, creating additional tools for all of our IU leads to put in their toolbox to work under their catchment areas. And, you know, Jeff will appreciate this. This is my, my shameless plug for the how-to guide. You know, when I was at the district, uh, one of the things that, you know, you would get the pays results and you would look at them and, oh, this is a great report and you'd put it on your shelf. But if you go to the, to the Bach Harrison website and actually the PCCD's website, navigate to the actual pays how to guide like what i'm envisioning is if you're an sew lead um, in your iu this is going to be an awesome data set for you to to grab that high to uh, how to guide and you can really walk through to even setting up goals looking at uh, challenges identifying supports i mean that how to guide is going to be really useful to you where you could almost you know, you could almost do a training session of pulling in all of your, your districts and going through that how-to guide. I mean, that could be a great summer project. That I mean, there's so much that you could do with that data set if it speaks specifically to your catchment area that we, uh, we were just thrilled that Jeff and his team were able to work with us in providing this IU-specific report. So definitely going to be really helpful. And if we're doing shameless plugs, <laughs> I'll do a shameless plug for our Wednesday, first Wednesday um, at one webinar series. Scott, thank you for that, uh, uh, that opening to do the shameless plug. But um, also um, you can uh, register for those if you aren't attending already. We are going to be um, covering the pays guide that we are really proud of um, in April to kind of let you know a little bit further. But Scott, I love the idea as a practitioner of working with others and helping them really understand one of the key roles that you could play is like you said a great summer project bring in your districts break apart the use the guide and the modules because it's broken down in that way have your districts uh, come together talk about what they're doing then have them leave and go do some work have them come back again we could help you design some really cool opportunities um, because one of the things that we're finding and and uh, even with y'all uh, you so it's a lot to go, hey, here's all this great stuff, but helping people fit it into their already really crowded space because time is such a commodity um, is tough. And I think, again, really looking at what um, how you could work with that, encouraging also your school districts to participate in this webinar series because we are covering a lot of really cool things um, coming up in the next few months and um, over the summer a little bit. So thank you for the shameless plug. <laughs> Yeah, I do have those, those upcoming, um, I'm sorry, Dana, I, I do have those upcoming um, uh, first Wednesday at one webinar series uh, uh, topics uh, posted right now. And I thought, Phyllis, that I, I think that's a great idea um, to connect with your districts, you know, for our IU leads to, to reach out to their districts and, and share this opportunity, um, you know, for everybody to sign on. Absolutely. And I am putting the registration link in the chat. Anyone is welcome to those um, webinars. Yep. So they're free, they're fun. Um, so please. Yeah, feel free to share with your districts, share it with your staff, whomever. <laughs> yeah. Dana, more Jeff, the more the merrier. Um, uh, maybe I was imagining this, but did you guys say there was going to be a feature to compare the years? Maybe I was just dreaming at one point, but I'm, the, I thought the, somebody the, said that. Yeah, the profile reports will contain three years of data. Okay. Uh, so in other words, you'll be able to see lifetime use of um, alcohol, um, uh, 17, 19, and 21. Excellent, thank you. But yep. Michael, and these that, reports will not, not the preliminary these report. These will that not, will correct. Not in April. That's for okay. the full report when, when all the data is in, because the preliminary okay. reports just as like a quick reminder and something like we just need to make sure we remember as we're working with districts is the preliminary reports are only districts who did online. So numbers may change a little bit when the full reports come out in April, May, 
um, because they will have the paper pencil data in as well. Yeah, we're guessing that we're guessing the change will be will be you know very small, but if there's a difference in the numbers, that's that's why. So that leads me to the question: Will there be two statewide reports in the end? One which contains what we're talking about today, the folks that took it online, and one that is a combination of both. No. No. Um, we are going to post the uh, COVID and remote learning online on the PAYS website uh, at the state level uh, because those will not be available in the, um, the, 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 the summary uh, profile reports. Uh, we are not going to do a, we're not going to post a full um, uh, state level uh, preliminary report. Um, we will have um, two versions of the state report with the same numbers. The first will be uh, the version that, that is in the same layout format as the district and county reports that will come out in early May. And then we'll have a more kind of uh, detailed analysis that comes out in June. That's where we'll have some gender comparisons, some uh, additional cross-tab analyses, some additional uh, more detailed look at the data um, at the state level. Thanks for explaining, Jeff. Absolutely, Mary. Sorry, but the IUs will get both the preliminary and the one that comes out. That is correct. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. The 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 link for the um, uh, the preliminary report. Um, Will come out whenever Dana says it comes out, <laughs> uh, but the the IU reports will come out. Uh, the full profile reports will come out. Um, they'll they will be uh, electronic only, PDF only, uh, but they will be sent to the IUs. Um, we'll coordinate with PD on that distribution. Uh, they will come out in early May, the same time as the, the county level reports. Thanks so much. What other questions do we have while we have our PAYS team here? While we're waiting for people to think of questions, Phyllis, Jeff, or Kelly, can you talk a little bit about the cross tab tool? Because I, I want to really highlight that training on June 1st. Um, and yeah. cross tabs has been available on the website. Um, but I don't know that we all know how to use it or we think about using it. And that's why we're requiring a training for it. Um, basically what a cross tab allows you to do is to take two, two data variables and see um, the relationship between them. So for students that answered, uh, I was bullied in the last, you know, the, over the last year, uh, what, per what percentage of those students also reported uh, feeling depressed, or what percentage of those students reported uh, consuming alcohol over their, their the last 30 days. It allows you to take that deeper dive into the relationship between uh, the different variables uh, that are available in the data set. Um, so that is, as Dana mentioned, that's been available at the county level and the state level uh, going back to 20, boy, 2013. What we've done this year is we've contracted with um, with Bach Harrison, our uh, contracted vendor, uh, to provide that to our districts. Uh, so they're able to do that sort of comparison at the district level. But what we're asking them to do is to attend a training. Uh, we're still working out the details as to what that'll be involved with. Um, but basically to help them understand how to do, uh, how, to, how to use that tool, how to best do that sort of comparison. Um, and the, the rationale behind that is that we don't want people uh, misconstruing the results um, because they're not familiar with how to do that sort of analysis. Did I get it, Dana? And Jeff, um, those First Wednesday uh, trainings are recorded, correct? If we can't access them? That is correct. Um, um, Phyllis, do you have a, a link you could, you could share with Dana to share with the group? Well, actually what we ask is that folks register. And then if you're not, you just go in and register for the whole series. 
Um, it's the and is the same link for every series. And then once we create, you'll then be as a registrant, you'll then be you'll then receive access to the place where everything is. So we're just trying to kind of form our own little learning community around pays. And again, we understand if you can't make it. Um, if you register now, you will have access to all of the materials um, throughout the series that started back in September. Uh, we are exploring um, kind of a, a timeline of a delayed release of the information. So it just takes a minute to register and you'll have access to everything. And we're not gonna spam you, we're not gonna, Ask exactly. you to sign up for various uh, <laughs> uh, timeshares or anything else. So, and we don't sell our list or anything like that. <laughs> nope. No, but it, it it as Phyllis just mentioned, we're we're looking to get people that that care about what our kids uh, are telling us to to join this learning community. Um, and you know, I think one of the the great things about the IU report. Um, is that your individual districts that have their reports are going to be able to say, wow, we're right in line with, with um, what our, our peers are, our, what our, our, our students' peers are saying as well. Or, um, wow, we're, we're seeing something spike in our district that uh, is not spiking at the IU level or our or, or sister districts. Um, and again, it's it's the idea that that there is no one size fits all. Um, not every not every student is dealing with with an opioid epidemic. Not every student is dealing with bullying. But what we're able to identify is what our kids need with this data. And the more we can tailor our approaches to help our kids um, at the district level, at the building level. Um, one of the things Scott, uh, Kurt, and I have had conversations about is um, they boiled, uh, when he was with Central Dolphin, they boiled it down to the individual uh, building level uh, because what was going on at one high school was different than what was going on at another high school. We're able to work with you on that. Um, we're able to work with all of your districts. Whatever they want um, to, to help them is what we're here to do. That's the, the intent of the PACE project. Well, I know our time is ending, so I just want to say from all of us, um, just such a huge thank you, um, Jeff and Phyllis and Kelly, for all the work that you've done and for making this possible. We're so excited about these preliminary IU reports. I promise they are going out. I just have to gather the list of everybody and make <laughs> the emails. Um, I have the links. So they are going out um, this week. Um, middle of next week at the latest if I don't get all the email addresses that I need prior to uh, Friday. But um, please know that we appreciate you. We're so thankful for our partnership. And if there are any follow-up questions, please feel free to reach out to any of us. We can connect you um, with Jeff and the team if you have specific questions for them. And um, we appreciate all of you and everything that you do. You're here. Bye, everyone. Have an amazing rest of your week. And we appreciate you, Dana. <laughs>